Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. So far in the Getting Started series, we've put a lot of work into setting Home Assistant up, setting up some automations, and tidying up the user interface to give us a nice dashboard. In some cases, you might actually want to have Home Assistant when you're on the move, such as when you're out of the house, or maybe you just want to have a tablet hooked up somewhere around the house so that you can turn the lights on and off from bed. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Home Assistant on your mobile device, whether that's a smartphone or a tablet. Now I'll be demonstrating this on an iPad and on an iPhone, but there are Android versions of the Home Assistant app as well. Leave a comment in the comments section below, and if enough people want me to do the video on the Android version, I'll make arrangements to get an Android phone and make that video for you. If we pop over to the iPad in the App Store, if we search for Home Assistant, we'll see that we've got the Home Assistant app there and it is for free. And that's for iPad OS and iOS. And I'll pop a link in the description. And I'll also pop a link for the Android version down there too. After you've installed the app, we obviously need to set it up. So let's open it up and get started. We're presented with this welcome screen. And if we hit continue, we'll be prompted to select our Home Assistant instance if we're on the same network. If auto discovery doesn't work, we can also hit enter address manually to manually enter the details of our Home Assistant server and get everything configured. In this case, we're going to select Hive Demo, which is the demo instance we created in episode one of the Getting Started series. After selecting the instance, we'll need to tap connect, hit continue, and we need to authenticate with our username and password. And we'll tap next. So now we're presented with this screen, which asks us to provide access to some data, including our location, our motion and pedometer, and push notifications. So we'll tap allow on each of those and we'll hit continue. Now it's just setting everything up. Once we've gone through all that, we'll be dropped out to the Lovelace dashboard and we're presented with the rather familiar Home Assistant interface. Now that we've got this Home Assistant interface, we can turn lights on and off as we did on the web browser. But what's particularly useful now is if we go to configuration and then to devices, I'm just going to grab iPad here, and we see now that we've got some information about the iPad and it shows us in this entities section, the different entities that have been created. So we've got the status of the iPad, whether it's home or away. We've got the iPad activity, and that's going to tell us whether or not the iPad is currently moving or stationary. The iPad BSS ID, um, now that is a MAC address. We also see the iPad battery level and the iPad battery state, and I've just unplugged the power cable and the iPad battery state has just changed to not charging. We've got the iPad connection type, and that's connected over Wi-Fi, and we've also got the iPad geographically coded location. Now again, I'm going to blur that out, but it is pretty accurate. It is based on GPS. iPad last update trigger, that is what caused the iPad to last send an update into Home Assistant. It's showing the SSID that the iPad is connected to. So in this case, we're connected to the force. And it also shows our iPad storage level. The most useful thing here is probably going to be this first item here where it's got iPad. If we were inside a, a specific zone, it would actually show that zone name there. So that information that we've got can be pretty useful for triggering automations. The app itself is particularly useful for turning different things on and off. And in a later video, we'll actually set up a separate dashboard for Home Assistant for this particular iPad and we'll use the iPad as a remote control to turn things on and off in our home. 
So very quickly, I'm going to show you the same thing on an iPhone. It is exactly the same process. Uh, however, we do get a little bit different data when we do this on an iPhone. So I'm just going to open up the Home Assistant app and I'm going to, again, use Hive Demo. We're going to hit Connect. I'll hit Continue and enter my username and password and click Next. And we're going to allow access to all of the things on this screen and we'll hit continue. It's going to log in again. It's going to show us that Nabucasa cloud is not detected. Okay. And we're on the dashboard again. So we'll pop back over to the iPad and see what information we can see about the iPhone. So again, we're going to hit configuration devices. We're going to search for iPhone and we'll tap on that. And again, we can see that we've got the information. Now we've actually got a bit more information about the iPhone than we did with the iPad. For example, we've got the distance that we've covered today, the number of floors ascended and descended, and we've got details of the SIM cards that are in this phone. This is a dual SIM iPhone, and the number of steps that we've taken today as well. The last thing I'll mention with the mobile app is this app configuration item here. And it slides out some details and there's things like the name and the version that we're on. Uh, we recently updated to 116.1 and there's some really good updates in that. So I would recommend um, running the update. And there's some different settings that we can take a look at. So we've got general, can change our, uh, take a look at our connection. Um, and you'll notice that we're only connecting using the uh, IP address. If you were going to be using this on a mobile phone, then you were not in your home and connected to the same Wi-Fi. In order to do it, you would need to expose your home assistant to the outside world. It is possible to do that through Nabucasa Cloud, but that's not the topic of this video, and we'll take a look at that in a different video. We can see information about our location, whether we've got permission, motion permissions, etc. Whether we're updating on entry and exit to zones. We can choose our update sources, uh, entry and exit of zones. Uh, we've also got the sensors that we have access to and it shows us uh, the details on the iPad of the sensors and the period that they are updated at. And also in integrations, we've got NFC tags. Um, now on the iPhone, the NFC tags, we can read and write an NFC tag and use those NFC tags to uh, trigger automations and do some more presence detection. And uh, last but not least, we've got reset and reset front end cache. Reset is going to reset the whole app back to the very beginning where we started. So that's the Home Assistant mobile app on iOS and iPadOS. I hope this video has helped you out in your home automation journey. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more home automation content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to share my channel with your friends. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. I'll see you next time.